Welcome, uh, this is a course on dealing with materials data. We are going to talk about collection analysis and interpretation of data and we are looking at uh, R to do uh, this uh, um, analysis and interpretation. Uh, we have started learning R and we have seen how to use R as a calculator and interpreter. And uh, in this uh, session of the module, we are going to look at how to enter data into R and uh, how to uh, manipulate data uh, and, uh, and visualize data and so on and so forth. So for doing that, uh, we are going to use uh, um, a table of data so, and, uh, and, and how to introduce this uh, table into R and how to work with it is what we are going to learn. And uh, the data that we are going to use, the table of data that we are going to use uh, is uh, the crystal structures of some elements, right? Uh, crystal structures could be FCC, BCC or HCP. Uh, these are the only three that I am going to consider in this table. And for each we will take uh, 5 elements. For XCC for example, we will take aluminum, nickel, gold, silver and copper. For BCC we will take iron, chromium, molybdenum, vanadium and tungsten. And for HCP, we will take magnesium, beryllium, zinc, cadmium and titanium. And the density and melting point, uh, density in kilogram per meter cube and melting point in uh, uh, degree C uh, that is reported in Raghavan in the material science and engineering textbook is what is given here. For example, aluminum has a density of uh, 2700 kilogram per meter cube and uh, melting point of 660 degree C. Nickel has uh, 8,900 kilogram per meter cube and a melting point of uh, 1453 degree C. And similarly, gold has 19,320 uh, kilogram per meter cube, um, it is much heavier uh, or, or denser and uh, the melting temperature is uh, 1063 degree C and so on. So, we have this data. Uh, what we want to do is to get this data into R and so we can wor start work with it. And how to get this information into R in tabular format for further analysis is the question. There is a hard way and there is an easy way. Uh, of course, today we are going to start with the hard way. The easy way is the one that we will do in one of the following sessions. So, the hard way is of course to enter everything into R. So, let us uh, get that. And uh, because this involves lots of data and things like that, so I have already uh, entered this data and I have made a script. So, let us go to the script and it is called the elements. So, we will now work through with this. Uh, okay. So, what is it uh, that we are doing in this script? So, we can source this script okay, um, and, and it is sourced. So, let us start line by line. So, this is the uh, line which says elements is the name that I have given and it is a matrix right? and this is a um, data for the matrix. So, what does the matrix consist of? So, it says for example, it is FCC 2700-660, FCC 8900-1453. Uh, so, like that we have all these uh, values listed FCC 1932, um, 19,320, 1063, FCC 10,490, 961, etc. So, we have and at the end after entering all these uh, uh, 15 elements, uh, their density melting temperature, we are saying that there are 3 columns and the data is entered by row. Right? We said this is for example aluminum, this is for nickel. So, each uh, data is like 3 columns. So, this 3 makes 1 row, next 3 makes the next row and so on. Right? So, we said that number of columns is 3 and it is by row the data is entered. So, it is uh, R knows that this matrix is made up of uh, 3 columns and so every 3 it has to bunch and it, it has to make into a matrix. Columns have names. Right? Columns of this uh, object elements have names and what are the names? Crystal structure, density and melting point. Right? Right. So, that is what it is. And the rows also have names. Right? There are 4 uh, row elements 
and the rows also have names for example aluminum, nickel, gold, etc. So it is also possible for example you can make number of columns 4 and include the name here itself as aluminum FCC 27600, nickel FCC 8900, 1453, etc. And then you could have given the row names, so column names as element and then crystal structure density melting point and uh, then you do not have to name the rows at all. So, this is an exercise that we, you are going to do, uh, you are going to take this and modify it a little bit and then you are going to work with it. So, and we are saying that uh, this uh, object elements, uh, it should be stored, this matrix that we have prepared uh, in the name of element should be stored, uh, stored as a table and then if you say elements, okay. So, it gives you the list, right. So, it says that there is crystal structure density melting point and there are all these elements aluminum, nickel, gold, silver, copper, iron, chromium, molybdenum, vanadium, etc. And their crystal structure and their um, density and melting point is given, okay. So, let us go back to the uh, nodes. So, so, this is what we have done, done. So, we have given the information by hand and we have prepared a table and this is the table that we are going to work with for the rest of this session, right. So, you can use this command class elements. So, element uh, it is a table obviously because we said that uh, the matrix should be stored as a table here. So, it is stored as a table. So, there is no surprise there, okay. Then what do we do? Then we can say the structure of elements. Okay. So, so when you ask for the structure of elements, it says it is a table and it has this 15 rows and the three columns and uh, so the, those three columns have uh, information like uh, string like FCC etc and the numbers and uh, the, the columns and uh, the rows are labeled and the labels are crystal structure density melting point aluminum equal gold silver etc. So, this is what we have done and this is the information that uh, it gives. So, notice the difference when I say str within quote elements, it just considers this as a, uh, um, a string. So, it is just some characters, but when I say str of this table object name elements, then it gives me the information about this data. So, that is what is done here, okay. Now, let us use two more commands, head elements. So, it gives you the first 6 rows of the data. Of course, you can also use tail and it gives you the last 6 rows. So, remember it was FCC, BCC, HCP. So, the, the, the last 5 are HCP and uh, the, the, the one before that was BCC. So, you get all this information. So, you can look at some aspects of the data using head, tail, um, etc. these commands. Mm, so, um, okay. so, we can do that. Now, what do we want to do? We want to separate the data according to crystal structure and plot the density against the melting temperature. Okay. So, this is the command that does that. Okay. So, let me copy. copy this and put it here, okay. So, what does it do? It stores in the variables x, y, z, etc. the rows which have in the table elements the character FCC or, or the string FCC or BCC or HCP. Then it is going to plot by taking only those data, the second column of that data will be the density of that element and third column of that data will be the um, uh, 
the melting point of that uh, element. So, this is what it is going to do and let us do one by one so that uh, we still have this um, information. Okay. Okay, so, this is, uh, so let us uh, run through one by one. Hmm. Okay. So, this is for FCC, um, do you see a trend with the density, does the melting temperature increase uh, is a good question to ask. We will ask and answer questions like this as we go along. Uh, Let us uh, look at all BCC, so they also have this uh, data. Uh, Let us take a look at uh, HCP. and they also have this data. Um, and as you can see in the case of HCP it looks like uh, lower density has higher melting point and uh, higher density has lower melting point. Uh, I do not know if this is an actual trend, but at least for the data that we have we can see uh, something like that. Of course, uh, suppose you wanted to get all these th three figures uh, not like this individually that is what is shown here, there are three figures, this is what we got just now. But suppose we wanted to get them next to each other and here is a code that is that. Okay. So, let me copy and paste it here. So, this, uh, this command par mf row column of 1 by 3, so it is going to put a um, the, all these three figures in a row and uh, so it is one row and there are three columns uh, to this uh, row. So, that is what the figure is going to look like and as you can see. So, now it becomes easier to compare. Uh, so, for example, this is um, uh, FCC, uh, this is BCC, this is HCP and you can see that FCC densities uh, the, the range is slightly different. So, you have below 5000. Uh, here everything is above 6000 and uh, here you go up to more than 18000. Of course, there was uh, um, uh, gold here which was very high and uh, then here you have um, going from 2000 to 8000, right. There is nothing above 10000 in the case of HCP. And uh, then in the case of uh, uh, melting temperature also, so the range is uh, 1400, here it is above 3000 and here it is uh, 1600. So, so it is easier to compare the data uh, if you have these figures uh, uh, right next to each other. You can also plot uh, the other way, um, let me try that. Um, I think you can uh, another uh, script and I want to make it. Uh, so, let us uh, source this. Now, you can see that you can also make this plots uh, by aligning them this way, right. So, you, you have now three rows and in each row you have only one plot. And so, you can you can play with it and you can get many different kinds of plots and, and you would have seen in the demo sometimes there were plots like this more than one plot of different aspects in the in the figure. And, and one can ask many other questions for example, can I get all this data in one single plot, but with different symbols or different colors you have seen in the demos that it is possible. How to do that is a question, so that we will uh, do in one of the uh, following sessions. So, this uh, module is just to show you that you can take data and you can by hand put data. Of course, it is very painful to enter data like this and it is also not possible to enter data like this if you have a large amount of data. 
you know this is some 15 lines and uh, 3, 4 columns it is ok. But if suppose you have to have uh, some hundreds of uh, uh, lines or thousands of lines uh, or, or you are just getting data from an experiment, so it already comes in an electronic format. Uh, so how to get that data into R, so import data into R uh, is something that also we will do uh, in one of these sessions. So, uh, so but for, for now uh, this is to enter data by hand and work with the data. And like I said that there is a small exercise based on this uh, that you can do yourself uh, by modifying this table a little bit and working with uh, such a table. Thank you.